Yo, I'm Bob, and the Marvel happened to be totally blind since birth, talking about X-Men, the animated series, season 3, episodes 7 and 8. They are the Phoenix Saga Part 5, Child of Light, and No Mutant is an Island. So, Child of Light, the fifth and final part of the Phoenix Saga, premiered on September 9th in 1994, and No Mutant is an Island, I guess you could call that a kind of epilogue to the Phoenix Saga, that premiered on September 21st in 1996. All kinds of production issues with some of these episodes. So many of them would air out of chronological order. Uh, I remember seeing Savage Land, Savage Heart, or maybe it's called Savage Land Strange Heart, the day after the Phoenix Saga Part 5 would air. And this one was aired way out of order because Wolverine, uh, he mentions in that particular two-parter that they're studying Jeannie like a lab rat on Muir Island. I was thinking, wait a minute, when the heck did she come back? So yeah, the uh, the epilogue to the Phoenix Saga, uh, No Mutant is an Island, that aired two years later. So, you know, for the longest time I was like, well, she just kind of found her way back to Earth somehow. They haven't really explained it yet. Um, we do get a bit of a flashback in the Dark Phoenix Saga, but... Uh, the conclusion to the Phoenix Saga didn't really make me all that upset when I was a kid because we were actually studying the Phoenix in my gifted and talented class when this episode had aired. You know, it was a big part of mythology, so I already knew what kind of creature the Phoenix was. And when Jean started talking about sacrifice and all that, I was like, well, you know, she's probably fine because the Phoenix can rise from the ashes, so Jean's not really gone. It's a kid show. They're not really going to kill her off. And of course they didn't. But uh, I loved getting to catch the final episode of the Phoenix Saga the day it premiered. Like I said in a few other videos already, I missed the second, third, and fourth episode. So here I was getting home to watch the final part. I still enjoyed it very much. The recap filled in some of uh, the blanks for me. I talked to some friends, and they'd already seen those as well. So we were kind of talking X-Men for the entirety of the week. And, uh, I mean, the, the entirety of the final episode of the Phoenix Saga is the X-Men having to fight a big boss battle with Deken. And he's laughing maniacally throughout the, the final episode. I'm not sure what he looks like here. I'm guessing he probably has uh, some kind of altered form because now he's a part of the Imkron crystal or the Macron crystal. I think that's how they pronounce it in the Ultimate Alliance video game. And you've got Storm. She's in New York City trying to stop the, the weather disturbances caused by the Imkron crystal attempting to pull the sun into itself. Deken has uh, initiated a, a train a train reaction. <laughs> a chain reaction. And everything is being pulled into the Imkron crystal. He doesn't care. Um, he's just power mad here. I wonder what he looks like in this particular episode. I think someone once said he got really big. Maybe he looks more like a rock-like entity here. I'm not sure. Uh, but his voice is altered. They're using some kind of um, flange technology on his voice here to make him sound even more sinister since he's part of the Imkron crystal. You've got Corsair and the Star Jammers. They're helping out the X-Men. I like how Gladiator is now 100% behind Lalandra. Uh, he, uh, he is no longer serving to Ken, and uh, so he's offering her services. He says, I think, something along the lines that he regrets having to begin his service to her under such trying circumstances. I forget who I was watching this episode with. Probably more than one individual. And they all pointed out a little Spider-Man cameo as several people on Earth are trying to deal with the effects of the Imkron Crystal as everything on Earth going crazy. I think we get to see Spider-Man. I'm not sure how many other little hero cameos we get. I want to say maybe Ghost Rider. Um, I don't really get to watch these with, with too many fans. Uh, so it, it's been a while since I've actually sat down with somebody and you know people were pointing out this and that. I go by memory and it has been a heck of a long time since uh, I've watched this episode with folks. And there's not really a lot of talking in the fight scenes here. I just noticed a Ken laughing maniacally. Jean, or Phoenix as we should call her, she's attempting to figure out how to stop him. And yeah, you've pretty much got Deken 
being a madman. He's laughing maniacally. He sounds like he's sick. Well, I mean, he is sick, but he's he's kind of... His laugh is somewhat different in this episode. It sounds a bit more like uh, he, he's struggling with a cough here. I don't know if the Emkron crystal is affecting him uh, on a physical level. It probably is. But yeah, uh, he keeps pretty much laughing like a madman. Almost sounds like he's suffering as he's laughing. Uh, I remember seeing the uh, the episode for the first time and thinking, geez, it sounds like the Ken got pneumonia or something after he uh, harnessed the power of the Imkron crystal. But of course, I like how the episode ends. You've got Jean taking the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix Force along with her, of course, because she's possessed with the Phoenix Force. And uh, they, they throw the Imkron crystal into the heart of the sun, seemingly uh, ending Jean's life. But like I said, uh, I was... Pretty sure that we were going to see her again. Professor Xavier kind of gives it away at the end of the episode when he's talking to Cyclops about the legend of the Phoenix and how she'd rise uh, from the ashes. The mythical being would rise from the ashes. And we were studying all sorts of mythology and gifted and talented at that point. So I do remember not being too torn up about Jean sacrificing herself. Um, I really wanted to see more of the Shi'ar, the Praetorian Guard, Corsair. Uh, I really wanted to have that moment where Cyclops and Christopher find out that, you know, they are son and father, but we didn't get it in the episode. And uh, I, I don't think I knew who Corsair was in relation to Cyclops. No, I wouldn't have known who he was in relation to Cyclops when I saw the episode for the first time. I learned that during the uh, the, the rewatch. So unless somebody at school pointed that out to me, which they very well might have, it was such a whirlwind week because we were getting slammed with X-Men episodes every single day. Uh, but I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it had such a, a sad ending, but I mean, I, I was pretty sure that Gene was going to be okay. Um, orphans, not orphans in, we're, we're not even two orphans in yet. Uh, no Mutant is an island. Um, I love this one because it filled in such a big gap. Uh, you actually got to see Jean returning to Earth at the end of the episode. You got to see Cyclops beside himself with grief because, you know, to him and to, to the other X-Men, Jean is gone. And they have this this memorial service for her at the beginning of the episode. I love where Beast is is reading poetry. And everyone's trying to console Scott. And Jubilee is just... Ballin. I mean, she is understandably heartbroken as to, you know, what has happened to Jean and Rogue uh, is, is, is as empathetic as, as ever, you know, attempting to console Jubilee and Cyclops. I like how he just runs off. He's, he's had enough with sacrificing everything. He feels like he's lost entirely too much. It was just kind of going on a little sojourn. And I like this because we didn't really get a solo episode for Cyclops in season two. We got so many episodes spotlighting other X-Men characters, but this is our first uh, Cyclops solo episode. And uh, I remember when I, when I watched this one, I think we'd already gotten... Yeah, we'd already gotten Orphans in and Secrets Not Long Buried, I think, by by this point. But I liked this one because he goes off and he he's kind of revisiting his past. He meets his old flame, Sarah. I like how uh, we get to see Kilgrave, the purple man, I believe. So, yeah, by the time Jessica Jones had come out, I, I knew who this guy was. Um, I think he was already in Earth's Mightiest Heroes as well. But this was where I'd first been introduced to the purple man as well as the uh, the kids that he captured and i like how the purple man like magneto he thinks he's doing good for mutant kind he's going to try to infiltrate the government he's going to try to uh you know get to become governor so he can unleash his hatred on humankind uh, it's very very sneaky of him magneto is is all about open war with humanity uh, the purple man he's kind of a he's kind of a sneak in this episode and uh, you've got Cyclops doing what he does. I mean, even though he has been dealt a crippling blow to the heart, metaphorically speaking, uh, when these kids are in danger, even though he is understandably lost and grieving, 
he reaches down inside of himself. He, he gets right back up and he's all about helping these kids. Uh, even though, you know, he is in a lot of pain from the purple man. I do believe I like how, how the episode ends. I don't know. I don't think purple man is, uh, brought to an end. Sure sounded like it though when his helicopter exploded. He doesn't really do much in the episode rather than hypnotize the kids and uh, you get a lot of creepy kid chanting in this episode. The future is now. We will be respected and all that. I mean I think the the, uh, the kids chanting is looped at one point. <laughs> it's really creepy. By the way, speaking of looped things, there's this one laugh by DeKen in the previous episode, and uh, I think they loop that particular laugh quite a few times. A couple of episodes in which a lot of things are looped. Uh, but I enjoyed No Mutant is an Island as much as Phoenix Saga Part 5, especially at the end of the episode after the Purple Man is dealt with, after the kids are um, they're freed from his control, you know, just as in, in uh, this particular show, he can make people do whatever he wants in Jessica Jones. Uh, so he's you know, he's got his own little army of mutants, and they're, they're trying to um, infiltrate the government and all that. And not a lot of dialogue here when it comes to the fight scenes either, but uh, I wish we could have seen a bit more of this character as well as characters like Tacky, uh, Skids, Boom Boom. Uh, we don't really get to see a lot of them outside of just, you know, brief cameos here. Rusty seems pretty cool. Uh, I need to do some background checking on this character. I don't know if we'll see him at some point later on in like X-Men 97, if he's going to come back. Uh, but I liked how at the end of the day, uh, the poor kid, everybody believed him after he was taken back to kill Graves' creepy, guess you call it an orphanage, and he was ultimately... Uh, freed at the end of the episode. I think my favorite moment, though, was the moment that bridged the gap between this episode and all the episodes that chronologically would air before. We got that moment where Scott, he comes back home to the X-Mansion and everyone discovers, oh, hey, uh, Cerebro's picked up something. It's Jean. She's alive. And I was like, ah, there we go. It took two years, but I finally got uh, the episode uh, that goes right after the Phoenix Saga. This is finally the moment where, yeah, we discovered that Gene is, is back. And it was so weird watching the other episodes that aired chronologically uh, before this one, because they were all out of order. I remember when they were airing. And uh, I laugh at it now, but seeing the episodes uh, after the Phoenix Saga right away where Gene is on Muir Island and they're they're trying to do tests on her and I remember thinking what the heck happened here why aren't they explaining this <laughs> the, uh, the 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 fan in me that wants to see to watch everything in order in my own way I think I'm going to use the word watch uh, was just kind of uh, thrown for a loop for about two years and luckily we got the episode that you know explained how Gene came back to Earth. Well, we don't really get that explanation until uh, the Dark Phoenix Saga, but it's in this episode. Anywho, this this video is crazy long. Um, I love these two episodes. Next time, uh, we're going to be talking about... What are the episodes? I know one of them is Obsession. Okay, Long Shot. So we're talking about Obsession and Long Shot next time. I mean, Disney seems to have them in the proper... Uh, chronological order but I'm constantly looking on there and then I'm also looking on uh, the old web page that I saved where I think Stephen Melching had published a chronological guide to the episodes in actual you know viewing order chronological order so I'm constantly going back and forth and comparing the two <laughs> but I think we're we're good so obsession and long shot next time cannot wait to to get into those Till then, true believers.